Benzi, who is uh, on other assignments. Um, it's my pleasure talking to you today, sir. It's, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Um, please, by, by your name, we found you are honorable. Please, can you really define yourself properly to our listeners? Um, my name is um, yeah, Honorable Ibrahim Bakule Salama. I'm an uh, uh, APC aspiring candidate uh, for Bako Ridanja Federal Constituency. Okay, um, are, you, are you married or are you. Your family background, how. You married, children, or what? Uh, yes, I'm, um, I'm a son of a, uh, a veteran politician, uh, late Alaji Batule Salama, who happens, the, be, who happens to be the former uh, financial secretary of uh, AD Alliance for Democracy, uh, the party of uh, our leader of uh, APC party, uh, Jagaban, uh, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, I'm a I'm a single man um, propelling the the young people's agenda um, to to come to the fore. Okay, okay. Uh, to ask, what are some of your different leadership moments of your life? Hello. Hello. Honorable. Pardon? Yes, I can hear. You. Yeah. I so said, what are some of your defining leadership moments in your life? Um, I've been I've been born into uh, a political home. Uh, my very very early uh, in my in my my early age, uh, I was introduced to uh, General Hassan Usman Kazuna of Blessed Memory, uh, who has inspired me so much uh, to do so much for my my people and uh, my country. And uh, in addition to uh, I've been privileged to meet uh, uh, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, he too has inspired me to do so much. And uh, the pinnacle of it all was um, was uh, I was awarded with certificate of participation, and the in the mobilisation uh, uh, of of uh, the president uh, President Muhammad Buhari's victory, uh, signed uh, by the national chairman. Uh, and uh, a party was organized uh, uh, in honor of all executives of uh, APC that uh, have participated from, from diaspora. I was given an opportunity uh, to speak uh, in front of all the, the, the big dogs of the party. And I think that's, that's one of the, the most defining moments of my, my political career. Aspiring for the candidate for the House of Representatives, and um, I think by your by your goals, you must have. What are your current goals? Aspiring for this position. Yes, uh, we want to uplift our people out of poverty, and if you look at the level of poverty my people uh, are faced with, um, we can we can say as a, uh, you can have relative poverty. Uh, extreme poverty and abject poverty, and it's also so unfortunate uh, when you go to the to my side, you see some of this uh, abject poverty, and it's so sad. And over the years, uh, they've not been able to do anything to uplift the people. The young people are are, are so much, you know, uh, unemployed, and there is no any tangible. Uh, uh, um, a plan or program to uplift the young people out of poverty and, uh, and unemployment. I think was one of the things I'm actually coming to do is to to, to provide uh, jobs for the youth. If I may want to ask, give me one or two, in what, in what ramification, one or two reasons that you think as a candidate can be able to to alleviate this poverty from our people, your people. Yes, um, I think uh, over the past uh, months, uh, we've been able to contribute directly to the society. I was able to sponsor 
some uh, brilliant but needy students uh, from the three uh, secondary schools that are within my, my constituency. We'll be able to sponsor them and uh, pay their uh, NECO examination fees, which uh, is, is unprecedented. It has never happened in that uh, um, part of the world. It's also unfortunate that uh, these young people are so brilliant and they don't have any helping hand to help them. So out of the, the, the projects that we are coming to embark when we successfully get this particular thing, I want to, to, to have a fund or a, a foundation where we, 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 we get scholarship for, for, for students. And, uh, and uh, that's for at the tertiary uh, level, those who are after a completed secondary school and moving to tertiary level, we get them scholarship. Uh, I want to ask a very important question too. Why, why, why this party? Why the APC? Why not the PDP or any other party that you can be able to to achieve this aim? Why the APC? I, I am a bona fide member of the APC. I started my political career with APC, and uh, I I don't see any any reason. Uh, our president is doing very well. Our party is uh, is changing things. And uh, the, the other political party has no good track record. They have lost uh, uh, credibility. And uh, I'm, I'm part of, of APC, uh, a member of, uh, of the party, a member. member. And I, I will naturally uh, run on the shape of my party. So you believe in APC and you believe that is the only party you can, that can lead you to this, to this your achievements, you know? Yes, uh, very well. If you look at uh, uh, the, the appeals, the political appeals of, of, of a political party in Nigeria, and we can also have the second of the This is the only party that can do that. And in addition, we have uh, a, a president you know, who, who carries so much uh, confidence, a lot of confidence from the people. The ordinary people love him, and uh, the man is doing well, they know how honest he is. And it's one of the things that we are missing, uh, the honesty in the, in the leadership of, of, of this country. We are going to provide a very credible and honest way of leading the people. No more ruling anymore. Okay, in your in one of your in one of your goals or targets in becoming the representative of um, your constituency by alleviating poverty, you gave um, you gave a reason of you gave uh, one good reason of education. Do you have any other reason of alleviating poverty in your constituency apart from education? Yes, very well. Uh, we have um, sugarcane in a uh, in Delta local government. Uh, uh, a lot of farmers produce sugarcane over there. I don't see why we cannot bring foreign investors to come and uh, and uh, have a sugarcane factory over there. Which can create employment of people. And uh, as uh, the whole Africa, uh, the only country that produces uh, pencil is, uh, is Kenya. Okay, yeah. uh, even in Nigeria, it's from Kenya. It's so sad. We can, we can create one, one of these companies in my constituency where we can employ people. You know, you know uh, and, uh, um, we, 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 we make pencil for, for the whole country and even supply to some uh, uh, other countries in West Africa. Oh, okay. Um, you've talked about education, you've talked about farming, which I think is a better better way of alleviating and poverty. In, you said? In addition, yeah. the people are, are, are farmers, dominant. Yeah. Dominant, dominant, the work they, they, they do there is farming. Uh, and uh, we don't have all this uh, education farming going on. Uh, immediately, you bring this, this over, you don't, you don't find any farming activity. You know, we can do it. Uh, a lot of other countries are doing this, this irrigation farming. We can bring in tractors, bring in technology, give people the job through all this, uh, 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 the, the, the invitation of uh, uh, these foreign investors to come and, and help participate. We can do so much. Yeah. We, we just have been left over the years, and it's so, so, so unfortunate. We can use what we have. The farming is, 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 is dominant in what my people do. Yeah. So we can't we, we create uh, uh, employment and uh, uh, encourage people to get into farming, especially the young people. Okay. Um, encourage the, the irrigation farming, bring in technology, bring in tractors. Yeah. With the partnership of uh, of, of, of foreign investor, 
We can do so much. We cannot live our to continue living like this. There is no job. People are complaining everywhere. And uh, by the way, the leaders are not doing anything. It's one of the reasons why I'm running for this particular city. Okay. Um... Well, as we continue to ask questions, we want to. I want to ask a very good question. What um, what is your characteristics that you believe in in leadership? That a leader should possess. What are some of the characteristics that leadership should possess? I believe in uh, in honesty. Yeah. Uh, a leader must be very, very honest with people. Yeah. Uh, over the years, some of our leaders, the only change we find in them is in their own personal self. You cannot find any tangible change they've done to their people. You, yeah. can't, you can't find bringing any kind of a, a program that will uplift the people out of, out of poverty. The only change you see is in them using uh, uh, too much flash cars and, uh, and uh, building, buying houses everywhere. Yeah. You, you don't need 20 houses to survive in this world. You just need one or two. At mm. least, and, uh, you know, you make ways for for other people to, to, to come out of, uh, of, 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 of issues of poverty and, uh, and survive. You don't, you don't need to, to, to make yourself uh, appreciate that the society is degrading. So it's not possible. We should do something. We have to do something to change the course of our people. One thing I believe is honesty, 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 integrity, and honesty. Again, Honorable Ibrahim, have you before this, uh, before this, before your aspiring for this uh, position, have you had, a, have you had any political appointment before, or any office before in your constituency or in your state? Uh, I'm a member of uh, APC and uh, I've been uh, APC uh, UTA and I've been uh, APC leader for for the past four five years. Yeah. Uh, I used to live. Uh, our neighboring West African countries, uh, uh, where we we mobilized our members to come back home and vote for for APC. I've been leading the for, for some years, and uh, we we will be able to do so much for our party and for our nation and uh, for 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 the audience. Hello. Yes. Okay. So you've been an APC leader for for some years, and you'll be able to do one or two things during your your membership as an APC APC youth leader, isn't it? Yes, very well. We'll be able to involve a lot of uh, young people into the, the political system. Yeah. And uh, we'll be able to bring in so much uh, Nigerians that you know, especially live in uh, in uh, our neighboring countries. Okay. We'll be able to. Bring them back home to come and vote, and uh, you know some of them come back home to to reinvest back what they've, they've, they've got from some you know from living there. If I want to ask a personal question, what is what really is your motivation towards winning this election? What do you really believe in winning this election? Yes, I do. Uh, the current uh, sitting candidate. Yeah. Uh, has yeah. lost the, the confidence of the people. Yeah. And uh, anytime you see a leader being chased by his people, yeah. stones and stakes, you can see that uh, that particular leader is no more wanted in the political arena. Yeah. Um, uh, when you lose when you lose that kind of confidence from the people, there are people who believe in uh, in, a, in a much more credible person who they think will be very fair and sincere to them. Uh, somebody that will not betray their trust, somebody they believe and keep to his words and uh, can bring in, in uh, uh, help and uh, investment to the constituents. My people are confident, you know, not by themselves. And uh, our leaders just only really use teacher classes yeah. to, to run out of the, of the constituency. And it's so sad. You are representing the people. Where is uh, this idea of having a, 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 a town council meeting where you sit down with the people of your community? Listen to their, their voices and their concerns. You know, uh, one of my my things that I want to do is to create this uh, uh, widow and orphan foundation. Yeah. Where yeah. Uh, um, we can have uh, a direct uh, we we can align 
with uh, with, with uh, the widows uh, and orphan foundation, some of these foundations around the world to come around with the strength of the government to put that together. At the end of every month, we have some some packages for the, the women that are, their husbands die and leave them behind. With behind, we're talking about assistance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Educationally, and then give some financial support at the end of the month. We cannot live for our people like that. And uh, um, if you look at the society, you have uh, um, two people that when you uplift them from the society or you help them, yeah. you have you have a One is the youth. When you give a young man a job, you'll be able to take care of his wife. Of no, his wife, his family. Extended sister, his mother, his father, and his brothers. Honorable Ibrahim. Yes. Yeah, I see you are. Honorable Ibrahim, Suleiman, Salaman, I see you are a very young aspiring candidate and um, a young man who is willing to work for his people. How, what, what is the difference between the old politicians and the new politicians, from your opinion as a politician, as a new politician? Um, some of these are our old politicians are out of touch of the reality of what is actually going on. Mm -hmm. I'm a young man, yeah. I know the concerns of the young people. Um, their first priority is job, 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 job. job. The most an opportunity for a young man to get the best out of his life. Uh, some of our young people have graduated for years and they are staying at home. No they are not doing And, uh, uh, and uh, before you know, you they will just hear that uh, they said the future belongs to the youth. And uh, you graduate and you are staying uh, at home for years. And uh, before some and you see your hair growing in the uh, gray, and then you are no more youth. Yeah. And you are an important in, in unemployment. It's so sad. Yeah. So, left for you, you believe you believe this is the, this is the, this is the reign of uh, the youths and not for the old politicians? This, this, this is our time. This is our time. And this is... Um, we are tired yeah. of... Uh, uh, old people into the system. Yeah. Some of them have attained their age of retirement. Yeah. And uh, also, unfortunately, you find them in the Senate. Some of them are busy sleeping. Sleeping Some of them in the house of people are sleeping. <laughs> they are not active. They are not active. Look at the participants. That time, if around this time I'm sitting having an interview with you, can't I sit in the office and work, work for the ordinary people of Nigeria? Why? I can't. We are full of energy. It's true. These people have overused their time. They have overstayed their welcome. We yeah. will have to provide a retirement package for them to go home and rest. Let the young people come into the, the show. Let us let us use our energy and change the course of our people. You can to continue to be listening, staying in the Senate or in the House of Representatives, and mm -hmm. you are sleeping. Sleeping on the job. So this is the time of the youth. The youth must be able to come out and show that the responsibility of their society. Society. We cannot continue. Well, that is a nice that is a nice one from you. That is a nice one for me. I still want to ask a question. As a politician and as a new aspiring politician, and do you believe in Godfatherism? Uh, actually, I I believe in the in the, in the Father, not God, uh, with Father. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in Father. We have fathers and uh, and our elders that have been guiding us politically. Yeah. And uh, God is the ultimate father. He guides both the father and the, the son. The son. So I believe in the father. I don't believe in the, the God father. The father. No. <laughs> you believe in the father and not in God himself. <laughs> and they are willing to, to transfer power, uh, power to, to the young people. Yeah. And uh, we are also provide uh, a, a, a good retirement environment so that we can be able to go home to their homes and have some of the knowledge from them. Yeah. So all this, they will not be sleeping in the house as he said it anymore. They let them sleep at home and rest. Let yeah. the young people come out and, uh, and work for the people, ordinary people of Nigeria. We are full of energy, full of uh, enthusiasm and uh, we are so patriotic. Yeah. We, can, we can provide too much for this country. We cannot continue to be at home. At home, yeah. As, as, so many young people who have graduated and it's so sad some of them have spent the past 10 years some of them seven years some of them no five job. years at home these are periods that they can get in good working experience and uh, and become so so good to their uh, society yeah 
Well, let's deviate a little bit. I think um, I know. I know. As a young politician, this is not where you're going to end because you're going to aspire higher from the representative, even to the Senate or up possibly the presidency tomorrow. So let's talk about national issues for uh, for just a few minutes. Before I continue, how do you how do you you give a very good um, kudos to the president of um, the the country, which is President Buhari? How do you see him running for the second tenure? Um, the president is a very, very honest man. Yeah. And uh, yeah. We, we, the youth of this country, have uh, come to learn some, some things about him. Yeah. That uh, in Nigeria, still, we still have honest people. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and in our system, it's not everyone that is, is, is as bad as, as, as we think. As we think. Honest and genuine people who are after the interests of this country, yeah. who are after the change, uh, 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 who are not after looting and uh, stealing and sharing money that belongs to the ordinary people and students in this country. And uh, these are some of the things I've learned from him personally. Uh, we are coming from the same stage with him. Yeah. And uh, I believe uh, he has impacted so much, so much. He has inspired some of us. You know, to believe that, uh, that you know, he, 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 he is he's an honest person. That's an honest person. So honest. And he has been able to prove it to the nation. Yes, very well, very well. But um, I just, we just had um, uh, a message from somebody and he said, uh, we should ask you as uh, honorable. He said there is poverty, I will read it. He said there is poverty in the land. And we have no lights, no good roads. What's what's what what is your opinion about this? About having lights in Nigeria and good roading? Um, it's, it's so true. We are all victims of uh, this light issue and uh, road projects. These are some of the things that uh, our our previous administration have, have cost us so much. Some of them will just bring a contract. Yeah. Uh, they will table the contract down. Uh, budget for the money, share the money, and they will not execute they will anything. Not anything. Yes, and uh, we are in this particular stage uh, due to their negligence. How can uh, President Buhari, just after two years, uh, to three years, scatter the whole country in, in, in such a manner? We are in this country where we, we, we've seen, you know, uh, uh, people who are taking money that are meant for projects, uh, they will just share the money with themselves. And they will not see what happens. So yeah. we are in a place where we are now due to the negligence and the, and the corruption of the, the previous administrations of the of the past. And uh, President Obama is doing so much uh, to curtail this particular uh, uh, trend of, of, of stealing from the public purse. Well, that is a nice one, Honorable Ibrahim. If I want to drop you with a question, and it's a personal question, because I like asking every politician this question. Very well. Uh, you see, we just identified one basic problem in Nigeria, which is lightning. Which is lightning. If you become the president tomorrow, what will you do to that to solve that solution to that problem? Sorry. Issue of light. Yeah. Just if you are opportune to become the president tomorrow as a politician, I think you must aspire one day to reach to that position. If you by peradventure you become a president tomorrow. What is your solution to lightning in our country in Nigeria? What what I would do is uh, there are so many uh, proposals of uh, of dams, especially even in my constituency. There is one uh, project of dam that has been neglected for decades. For decades. And uh, if we would be able to utilize all those those laws in practice. That, that in that particular that we invite most can, can generate electricity for, for for the towns and the and the and the, and the villages around. Yeah. yeah. So some of these things we have to bring them out. You see, the problem of this particular country is uh, we've done so much, we have invested into into bring out bringing out of, of, of projects. Yeah. But when the project is out, some people just go and give the documents and share the money. Wow. <laughs> The main politicians still share money in Nigeria. Um, the issue of corruption. Yeah. I think President Buhari is doing so much. Yeah. And uh, it's not so easy to stop 
the system that has eaten the fabric of, of the society. The society. At least the president is doing well. He has blocked some of the major uh, avenues where people used to steal money. Yeah. Initially, before the NNPC with over 50 something accounts, all wow. in one name. The federal government was, was having so many accounts that you cannot trace. Somebody would just go and divert money and put it in their account because it's, it's bearing you know, a certain parastatal or a, 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 a ministry's name. Nobody can trace that money. But because of this DSA now, all money is getting to one particular account. And this is the beginning. By the time we get somewhere, uh, all Nigerians will be able to be satisfied with what the president is doing. Honorable Ibrahim. Before I close my, before I close the interview, can you give me some words of encouragement to Nigerians that may want to be your party members? Yes, uh, very well. I'm uh, hoping to be the lawmaker of the young people of this country. Yeah. Uh, we are left behind. Uh, we are, we don't have jobs. Our young people are not employed. And uh, they are, we, our young people have not been given the opportunity to, to, to become what they want to become in their, in their lives. Yeah. If I have the opportunity to house, most of my bills will be youth oriented. Yeah. I will be able to stand up for youth. We will be able to create you know, laws and um, bring out motions that will, will, will support the youth. And uh, we don't have so much time to continue wallowing in, in, in this kind of, uh, of trade. We must. Something and uh, the reason why I choose the house of it is the house of lawmaking, where I'll be able to go in there, bring the issues of the young people of this country, and then we'll be able to create a pilot project, especially from within my constituency, which can be replicated across the country to eliminate the issue of unemployment. And I am hoping that we don't see of this country. Well, Honorable Ibrahim Baturi Salami, we are very happy talking to you. We we appreciate your advice to us as um, young leaders, and we hope of, to talk to you on further issues as time goes on, maybe on another program. So we are happy we are we are about to close our our program, and I think um, you've given us a word of thoughts, and we will we we'll pray. If she allow you to become the the next the next uh, house representing the next um, house of rep representing your constituency, we wish you the best, and I think uh, we are about to close for now. This is Cleveland TV. This is Ernest Labo, City for Always Benzi. We just finished talking with the Honorable Ibrahim Baturu Salami, the aspiring candidate for the House of Representative for Bakuri. To Danja Federal Constituency Casino State. We are in Clev we are in Cleveland TV Live in partner with you and um, we hope to interview you next time again. Thank you very much, Honorable Ibrahim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. We are happy to speak with you.